Welcome to this series of videos called ERP2 Benefits Realization. My name is Andrew Norton and I'll be exploring some of the key issues facing organizations looking to implement an ERP2 system. The insights revealed in this series of videos draws upon the findings of a number of published sources. Firstly, this book entitled ERP2 Implementation Delivering Benefits Realization. And secondly, peer-reviewed journals and conference papers. This session is called Delivering Training for Highly Demanding Information Systems. An important part of change management is delivering the training required for an ERP2 implementation. In contrast to traditional ERP implementations, there are two distinct areas of training an organisation must focus on in order to deliver the full benefits of this system. End user training and post-implementation training. The first question we need to ask is, how do we enable readiness for change? Issue 1 relates to changing end-user behaviour. The first step is developing a culture of accepting change. This leads to the achievement of an appropriate implementation climate and an organisational readiness for change. Step 2 relates to creating readiness for change. This involves undertaking three key tasks. The first is raising awareness of the upcoming changes. The second is explaining the benefits. And the third is setting achievement target rewards. Issue three relates to the fact that providing training support underpins organizational change. Initial research estimated that for a successful ERP implementation, 15% of the overall budget was required. However, more recently it has been recognised that there is a widespread underestimation of the necessary levels of training required for ERP2 implementations. Providing training falls into two distinct training stages. First, the initiation phase, and second, the post-implementation phase. The second question we need to ask, therefore, is what training is required at the outset? Issue 1 relates to the fact that end-user training encourages acceptance. End-user training has been shown to have a direct influence on system usefulness. This ensures that operatives can perform their individual tasks. However, for ERP2 systems, training must also enable end-users to be able to use the information held in the system to perform their customer-facing activities. To address end-user training, there are five ERP2 critical success factors within the chartering, project and shakedown phase of the implementation. Our research shows that a holistic training strategy should be developed incorporating the views of both the client and the supplier, ensuring resources are adequately allocated throughout the implementation lifecycle. Our research shows that an element of customer management should be incorporated into the training materials for each functional department to ensure that end users can easily use the system to perform their roles. Our research shows that end user training should be as close to the go live data as possible so that they remember what they were shown whilst being flexible enough to allow for mop up training courses. Our research shows that staff members should be segregated into core users and standard users. Training for core users must be in line with the role mapping for their specific roles, ensuring that they can deliver the benefits in their new roles. Our research shows that training course evaluations should be undertaken to verify whether refresher courses are necessary. In addition, feedback can be used to indicate if consultants themselves need more training and ultimately to improve their own future training courses. The third question we need to ask is, what post-implementation training is required? Issue 1 relates to the fact that post-implementation training reinforces learning and instigates knowledge sharing. Many firms have knowledge capabilities but are wasting their knowledge-driven opportunities. The lack of adequate training has been identified as a key reason for inefficient system usage. To address post-implementation training, there are four ERP2 critical success factors in the onward and upward phase of the implementation. Our research shows that transition champions should be appointed in order to promote the benefits of the system. This can be achieved initially through train-the-trainer approach, whereby suppliers train selected staff from the client organisation. 
Transfer of knowledge from the supplier should also continue post go live. Our research shows that to deliver long term benefits, organisations must ensure staff members are continually trained and that training records are maintained, treating end users as knowledge workers. Our research shows that organisations implementing ERP2 should set up an internal support network of super users as existing staff may have tendencies to have reintroduced old working practices from old legacy systems. Thank you. The next session is tackling technical isomorphism and system atrophy.